Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the React series with uh, Body Language Explained and uh, other such tactics that are going on from the deductive world. My name is Ben Cardle, and for those of you that don't know me, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am the author of The Monographs, best-selling book on the real-world application of the skills of Sherlock Holmes, uh, and I spend my days uh, teaching security corporations from around the world how to better protect themselves and others using these. And so we are using this series uh, as a way for us to uh, look at the various videos and things that are going on to try and apply the proper contextual analysis um, of a scenario because as anybody that's ever read another person in a real life scenario will know that it is never as simple as A equals B. There's far too many variables, far too many things to compute consistently going on for that to ever be uh, an occurrence, right? So we're going to get past that and look at the follow-up to the, uh, the Amber Heard video that I did. Uh, I'm, it's, it's particularly prevalent uh, as well currently because he's recently lost his libel case uh, against the Sun. Uh, I'm, I'm still a member of, of Team Johnny, mostly because if you look at the displays from, never mind the story inaccuracies, but if you look at the actual display patterns from a people reading perspective, um, they, they don't make sense that he's a, you know, uh, I'm not going to use the words in case, uh, you know, I, I'm some, <laughs> somehow embroiled in it. Not that this video will ever go that far, but I don't want to, I don't want to uh, give it a chance. Um, yeah, so we're going to look at his deposition clip today from the good people that were willing to comment on the video before. Uh, they were able to provide a, a link to the deposition this time of Johnny Depp from the 12th of the 12th, 2018, very late on at night, 10.40. Uh, clearly he's been there for a while already, he's tired. And uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's remember moving forward, guys. Context is key to everything, all right? Context is key. Pretty nasty injury. Uh, uh, um, that I actually, I, I, I had to um, protect her at the time. And so I said that it was caught in the door, one of these, these huge accordion doors. Protect her at the time. Uh, obviously, Miss Heard. Um, other such more descriptive terms could be used for uh, for her, uh, but there it is. So already, we've got uh, almost almost quite shame, really, with the hunched shoulders, uh, the arms on the shoulders. Is uh, the uh, sorry the arms on the table rather forcing up those shoulders a little bit more. So there's the relaxation in the upper half in the neck. Uh, the way that he's sitting is is leaning forward, interested in exactly what's going on within the conversation, but the guy has has no energy at this stage. Could be because it's late on at night. He um, he's tired, right? Could be because he's been married to her for however long it is, and it takes a lot of energy to deal with that. Uh, what he's had to shoulder. As, uh, for anyone to have these slanderous things thrown against you, particularly if you're a male, right? Um, but everything tends to get swept up in a frenzy much, much quicker than it does if you're if you're a female domestically abusing uh, a male. But the the man looks beaten at this stage. at this house that wasn't the case at all um, she she smashed uh, 
she threw that it. That was weird. Smile. She smashed. Uh, she. So the, the, the smashing was a normal experience then. It went on. <laughs> Now it's 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 not into the realms of what the uh, you know the facial action coding system would have you believe is contempt. Um, this is more in line with the exhale. <sighs> Can't believe this actually went on kicking yourself, right? This this works in line with the context of his posture, which doesn't change. Um, the <sighs> fits in line with that as a way to amplify. The gestures that he's making at this stage. Can't believe he protected it. That's what you do. I know. I, I did that myself. You know. Uh, I'm sure. Are you sure you guys have done it yourself when you talk about um, ex partners? Can't believe they they did that. Can't believe I let them get away with it. You know. You end up kicking yourself. I think. I think is the phrase. Uh, and that could be used to accurately describe his posture, the head lowered, uh, the lack of energy. Which, I mean, the lack of energy is a, is a standard Johnny Depp thing uh, anyway. He's not the most extrovert uh, of characters. If you ever look at his appearance on any, uh, on any chat show, he's never flamboyant in his movements. And his voice is always quite... Uh, low key and how he talks it's always quite subdued and getting his point across it's always in here and then he'll rearrange himself and then keep talking threw a vodka bottle at me and my my hand was uh, resting on the marble of the bar like that and the first bottle went just and there we go First bottle, we get the action of how he was holding his hand, somebody reliving a memory that went on, right? This is, this is, uh, this is how we tell stories, you know? If you've ever told, um, I mean, if you, let's look at it even further away. If you've ever been engaged within a moment of something that happened for something that you weren't particularly involved in so if somebody's arguing at the uh, at the coffee shop say and you're not involved in it right when you're telling your friends when you get back um home or wherever yeah you tell them about this lady that was stood there she was doing this in this other guy's face and he was doing this and he was holding his bag you you act out you get involved because you relive it here so it comes out in how you display your body language same could be said for johnny depp here the subdued nature continues it's not flamboyant it's not extroverted it's a case of i was holding my hand like this in this bottle went so close past my head we illustrate it completely now this isn't an incongruent behavior because he's doing two separate actions i'm showing you how my hand was here and demonstrating here within the same narrative where this bottle went so there's nothing incongruent here he remains ventrally fronted there's nothing uh at, at the very least attempted to be concealed you know obviously he's a very gifted actor but this there's you can say about his acting roles is that's where he goes for the more flamboyant things right so were we to see some element of flamboyant um impeding uh, in his behavior we would ho have more uh more credence to believe that he was being deceptive but every single appearance that he's ever made right fits within this kind of baseline context of here this happened and this happened right so this isn't him being deceptive this is him telling a story of something what went on sorry that was very english there something what went on something that went on uh, and this that's how you relive it unlike amber heard who tells the story of uh, a very emotionally charged uh, physically violent scene or scenario at the door with no emotional content no intonation no action in, in, in the face no uh no uh illustration as part of her language it's all controlled it's all controlled through her eating and her uh her leaks towards her 
safeguard with this other person that's over there, right? The total opposite here. That's my ear. And the second one was a larger bottle and she threw it from about this distance. And it smashed into the bar, which um, um, this, this finger, who I now call Little Richard. Uh, <laughs> see, even there, right? If you look at his face, you can see the sadness in his eyebrows, but he's still trying to soldier on. That's what we do when uh, we're trying to get through something painful, right? Rather than circle the bowl in terms of drink and drugs, which he's confessed he has problems with. Um, so we try and make light of to make it more manageable. You know through his career that he's got an affinity uh, for for England and the culture that's that's what we do over here we we try and make light of it in order to make it more manageable so we can move on little Richard probably being um uh Richard the third there was the uh there was the painting wasn't there when he was uh like this with his fingers um I think the ring was coming off I forget when it was but it was it was probably to do with uh him looking to remarry at the time because I think his wife had just died. <laughs> no doubt, probably that's that's what Johnny Depp's hoping for right now. Um, but again, leaning forward, no deception. Illustration is congruent in his behaviour. Um, was was. Uh... But again, the the smile vanish, so you can see that it's not real. It's not a real, genuine state of elation. It's a case of this is what I call my Richard now, uh, and then we then we move on. So it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a coping mechanism. The, the the tip of the finger was severed, and the the all the all the bone in here was uh, completely shattered. I mean, it's it looked like Vesuvius. And then I got infections. I, I, I ended up with MRSA twice. Wow. MRSA twice is horrible anyway. But just looking at his blink rate. His blink rate has been the same throughout, right? I haven't counted them uh, because I'm not that kind of an all-powerful nerd that I'm able to do that. Plus, I, I don't want to miscount them as well because it's quite grainy footage. Um, but if you look at how fast his, his eyelids move as well, there's no increased fear, there's no increased level of, of anxiety. He's merely recounting an event, truthfully. And you can see the gestural emblem there of a man of a certain age who's uh, achieved almost statesmanlike qualities. It's very matter of fact to go, this is what happened, right? It's very traditionally masculine to go, this is what happened. It's still ventrally fronted. I'm still leaning towards you. I'm still facing you as part of the conversation. There's no deceptive markers. It's not an incongruent behavior because if I were to lean forward without this, it would take physical control to keep me forward. And if you are tired from being there for so long, this would be congruent within that kind of behavior, right? In terms of how you're speaking. He's speaking directly to the other person that's asking the questions. There's no sense of trying to go to a safe side or manage what it is that you're saying or manage your displays. So it's very complicated. I was trying to just get the finger back, you know, um, and, and then deal with the insanity of having had my finger chopped off by, by this woman that I was married to. <laughs> <laughs> nice use of distance in language there. Um, by this woman that I was married to. Yeah. Um, you get regret within the same context as well, but it, there's that self-management coping mechanism again. But you get, a, you get a sincere leak in towards his language pattern, right? The only embellishment that we would use 
And it's not necessarily an embellishment, more of a, a, a correct adjective, you know, fits well within his context that he's would highlight these particular moments like he does when uh, little Richard, you know, the, of, of having my finger chopped off, <laughs> the insanity, right? That's not, if you look at the word uh, from, a, from a written context, a written word, insanity would stand out uh, as, as, uh, as an anomaly. But if you look at it within context here, it's still fitting within the descriptive element of the story because having your finger chopped off is insane. <laughs> if you're not used to having your fingers chopped off. You know, everybody argues with their spouse, but to have... Uh, have bottles thrown at you and violence involved is quite something else so to describe that as insane is apt yeah not deceptive again I don't recall any of the stuff I was I, uh, when I was down or when the film was or when I was off uh, not being able to work because of the um, severity of the injury I had to go back to Los Angeles and have surgery so the Mercer knocked him out as well, the hand knocked him out of work, which would start anyone spiraling, right? Particularly if you, uh, if you look at the time as well. Now, my, um, my uh, Cervantist capability, my <laughs> sort of pub quiz knowledge, if you will, is, is films, right? Uh, you know, if, if an actor pops up randomly that I've not seen for 15 years, I'll still be able to give you their entire filmography of the films that I've seen, or I'm at least aware of. So if you look at, if you look at this kind of time, uh, you know, you're coming off 2018, so... Maybe Lone Ranger. Dark shadows, that kind. So this is a, this is a, a downtime, and he's picked it back up with, uh, with the uh, the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So he's trying to pick his career back up after those less than well received films. Um, so the the stress would hit anyone, regardless of the number of zeros that you get. Right, uh, the the stress would hit anyone. Of not being able to work. Um, so most of the time what I was dealing with was just uh, recuperating you know, you know or just you know I didn't want to lose the finger. Uh, there he is again, you don't want to lose the finger. MRSA, it vanishes. The MRSA. You don't want to lose the finger. If you look at every time this is displayed it vanishes straight away so it's not a felt state of elation. It's a, uh, can't believe it, you know. Can't believe this is happening to me. Uh, infection is really mm, yeah. quite evil. Um, and I ended up with it twice, so I was really just worried about losing a finger or an arm or... Story about the bottle and then um, Amber, uh, you know, apparently created some story about you punching a wall or something like that. She says that I did it myself, yeah, by punching a wall. Just another way to hurt you. I tell you. Uh, see that you can see the difference there again, right? The felt state, the the felt state of hearing ridiculousness, right? Because it's not joy. You can you can see from the expression if if I uh, if I roll it back slightly. that after he's just been told it right that's not somebody experiencing uh, joy because there's there's very little action going on up here this is akin to somebody baring their teeth uh, so it's when we hear something ridiculous right because the truth will out uh, as it were uh, this is the type of display in somebody that will have said in his own way uh, well, let her say whatever she wants to. She's only going to come off looking more stupid at the end of it. Because to punch a wall and then have this part of your finger come off and then uh, get Mirza twice. <laughs> um, even with my very little knowledge of 
uh, of uh, anatomy in that area at the moment, even I know that's impossible, right? Because your fist comes in that way, that way, even if you don't know how to punch properly, right? There's no impact here that would mean that would come off. If you punch hard enough and incorrectly enough, you might break a bone, but not the, not the, it wouldn't fall off. The impact of that can't do that. So that's probably why he's displaying this uh, genuine state here. That's it. Uh, I'd like to see reactions from scientists. I mean, and physicians who are you know, familiar with kind of, you know, uh, this. They are as well. There's another. Can't believe I'm going through this uh, moment. You can tell from the way his hair goes as well that that is congruent with the way he uh, moves the hair out of his face. So he's not a. Um, he's not a. He's not a double-sided guy because his hair would be slicked back. If you look at the way um, the hair has fallen over what would be the right side, it comes back that way from the right, which again fits within the congruence of how he stables himself with his left to free up the behaviour uh, illustrations with the right, and that's how that would come out of that. So all that's completely congruent with fatigue, with disbelief, no deceptive qualities there whatsoever. The hair tells the story. The eyebrows tell the story. Sort of trauma, this sort of uh, thing, because I'd, I'd love to see her explain how someone hits a wall, and if they put their fist through it, that means that it's, it's drywall or something. It's not. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I mean, I would love to see that too, because... For a scientist to be able to explain that one away would, well, it would more than likely mean that they're on Miss Heard's payroll, <laughs> uh, or it's or it's not scientific at all. Um, like the the hair tells the story, no matter what kind of hair it is in phys in in physical view uh, of how it's uh, physically pacified or maintained through another human. You will note as well. That if they're like I I I brushed mine before I did the video, obviously. But um, when when I haven't, if you ever clock any sort of awkward pictures of me, uh, I don't know. I don't know why you would want to do this, but if you ever do this on one of my social media stories and the like, everybody has this tell if they if they do it into in terms of how they manipulate their hair so often because it's habitual. I, I do this. I know I'm a righty, and because my beard is rarely this long at the minute. I, I would do this with the right. So nine times out of ten, it will start to pull this way more than anything because that's how I do it. When I brush it, it goes back to normal because that's that's how I cut it. It goes straight down. Same for Johnny Depp. You can do different styles. Look at how he was when he was in uh, when he was in the actual uh, uh, I think it was called Crimes of Grindelwald film. Um, but he definitely popped up in a cameo at the end of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It was slipped back because that was part of the style. It was in parts of the press tour. But how he was doing it there, that fits in line with how that style was made and how it's going to be maintained. It would go as part of that gesture, backed up by the fact that the body has to control itself to be able to do that. Because if he was here gesturing again, for the hand to do that and come and do that this side wouldn't make sense congruently in terms of habitual behaviour. It's, it's, it's Sherlock and Van Coon uh, all over again, you know, a lefty shooting himself on the right, right side of the head. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So all of that there is, is completely congruent behaviour, completely truthful. Um, a, a, a gentleman that's recounting a, a story shows... Uh, genuine regret and resentment for his actions in initially protecting her through stories, which you can think now in terms of um, uh, when he's being prosecuted by the other by the other side, they'll be asking him things like, "So why protect her in the first place? Why why say these types of things? You know, backpedaling on your story, making insinuations about uh, uh, about where he is at this at this moment um, and the like." Uh, 
yeah, you can see quite contrasting differences between how he is normally on uh, on chat shows um, and how he is in films uh, and TV appearances. That's where his flamboyance takes place. Every time he's appeared as Johnny Depp, he's always quite calm, quite subdued, quite minimalist in his actions. He's always leaning to one side and his voice rarely comes above this and he gestures uh, this way. Yeah, two completely different depositions. Uh, this this still vehemently keeps me in in Team Depp's corner. I, I don't I don't see any reason to believe otherwise at, at this stage. Right? This even if you examine this on their own as just two deposition videos without all of the other stuff that goes alongside of it. Right? There are so many holes in Heard's video, so many holes in her behaviour, uh, so many incongruencies that there aren't in in Johnny Depp's at all. And look at the time as well. Th three minutes versus however long that other one was. I fast forwarded through some of it as well uh, as part of the recording. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think, guys. I, I, am, I am genuinely interested. And um, it's it's genuinely something that I've been following as, as well as part of the meantime. Uh, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there's more of this type of stuff coming soon. Uh, the more body language analysis and deception detection. As much as I'm uh, I'm not as big uh, big of a fan of that phrase as everybody else seems to be. It's a buzzword. Um, we look to try and here on this channel. We look to try and examine how to do this properly and for the real world. Uh, and try and encourage the mindset of it never being A plus B equals C because that's not the case with real life. It's never the case. Uh, there is a ton of variables that we need to make ourselves aware of and we'll learn more about how to do it here. So yeah, if that's, if that's anything up your street, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and, uh, and hit the bell to keep track of when new videos are posted on the like. More podcasts coming your way soon. Um, and so yeah guys if you're if you're stuck inside during covid at the minute i wish you all well uh hope you're keeping uh, safe and making smart decisions for everyone around you uh, and if you're being led out in the wilderness now because it's safe to do so well enjoy it <laughs> because <laughs> england's now in the middle of lockdown again <laughs> so i'll uh i'll talk to you all soon guys take it easy